Hey everyone, it's Elise. Um, I am here today to do the Toy Theater Aquarium workshop with you. Woohoo! Um, it's been a little bit since I've done a workshop. It's been like two weeks, so I'm glad to be here again with you. Um, but here's a little example of the kind of thing we'll be doing. Um, so I made a Toy Theater Aquarium. I'm trying to make sure you can see my mouth. Um, I made a Toy Theater Aquarium out of a cereal box, and you can see I have my little fishy here. Um, there we go. Normally you would put, you know, uh, another side on this so you could turn it around, but I was lazy, but we're going to do that today. I'll talk about the importance of that. Um, but yeah, we're going to be making this. Um, I'll let you in on a little secret. You don't have to make necessarily a fish aquarium. You could, I don't know, maybe if you like lizards more or mice, you could totally do that too. The idea is just that we want a little pet in a box, um, except the pets are made out of puppets. Um, so the things we are going to need today are a cereal box, the bigger the better, just so you have more like room to play with. Um, you're going to need paint, I have my paints over here. Um, I So I was, I was really sad to discover that my glue stick I left open and it dried out, so I'm also using hot glue today, but if you have a glue stick or tape, those all work fine. Um, and then what else do we need? We need a little skewer. Oh, it fell on the ground. Need a little skewer. Um, and that's about it. It's pretty simple. And you're going to need scissors too. Um, you always need scissors for these kinds of workshops. Um, however, if you do have an X-Acto knife, this works really well for this project. So um, make sure it's sharp though, because a dull one will not cut through the cardboard. Um, so let's get started. One second. My video is very tiny. Oh, there we go. I made it big. Um, I need to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm not just vain, I promise. Um, so I'm going to flatten this box a little bit. It's like a little bit kind of, I don't know, not shapely. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to seal off the top because we want a closed box. Unless, of course, you want, for whatever reason, your toy theater to be open like this. We just want it to be open on the outside, though. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to seal off this box and you can just use tape. You can use the glue. Um, you can use whatever little adhesive thing you have. I'm just going to use masking tape for it. Um, I'm just going to keep it simple. And this workshop, I will be doing a little bit more audience participation than normal just because I can. You know, I want to know what kind of decoration do you want my, my dream aquarium to have? What kind of fish? So start thinking about that. Um, in a second, I'm going to be asking you what color I should be painting the background because that's kind of our first step. So um, if you want to comment a color, please do. And I will listen to that suggestion and, um, you know, paint the box that way. Um, so now here's a good part or a good chance to use your X-Acto knife. I have my sealed box. Um, you're welcome to paint the outside if you want. I kind of just liked the colors. Um, so I'm going to leave it, you know, it's natural state, but, um, you can do whatever you want. If you want to have, I don't know, like a uniform color or, you know, have like a funkier painted, um, outside of your aquarium, please do that. That'd be really cool. Um, so now I'm going to determine what side, where do I want like the front of this? It's going to be right here. Um, and I'm just going to cut out a hole. Right. And Megan Jeffrey said purple, so I'm going to be doing it purple. That's kind of cool. It's like a, almost like a psychedelic um, aquarium. Um, so as you can see, I left some, some borders, right? Because like, this is still ultimately a toy theater, so we don't want this entire thing to be um, cut out. So we're going to leave some borders and just kind of cut like this. I left about a half inch. Um, you can do, I don't know, an inch or less if you want. Again, it's your project. I'm not telling you what to do. Um, and also, I'm going to say, I didn't do it on this one, but if you want to like purposely leave a part, um, you know, not cut out, like maybe you wanted to include some like big rocks there or something, um, you could totally do that and incorporate it into the design. Oh my god, I almost just dropped it. All right, so I'm going to do that. I'm using my X-Acto knife. You could also just poke a hole in the box and then use scissors, um, figure it out somehow. Please be careful if you are using an X-Acto knife. No injuries here. Oop. And honestly, your border does not have to be perfect. I'm saying that because I just messed up a little bit. Um, not my much, don't worry. I'm a professional, so I'd never mess up, right? Alright, and I'm going to try to do um, kind of what I just suggested is like leave like a little bit... Um, or I'll show you in a second. I don't know how to put that into words. 
Maybe I'm gonna say it's like gonna be a rock of some sort. There we go. All right, I'm almost there. Just gotta, I can use scissors for that. I always prefer scissors because they're like slightly safer. So if you can use scissors, you should probably do that. All right, and now, I probably should have said this before, but we're gonna use this piece to create every other little bit in our aquarium. So save this, try not to cut it out like super rough or anything, because you are gonna want it still. Um, so I'm gonna take this and set it aside. I'm gonna treat it very, very well, because I know I, I want it to look good, and so I can use it as a base for the other things. All right, so here is the base of my aquarium. Um, I'm just gonna pretend that, the, it's always crazy to me because the video's in reverse. Um, I'm gonna use this little piece that I left as maybe like a fancy rock of some sort. I don't know. Um, just because the cool thing about toy theaters is that we wanna, even though um, these are very tiny, of course, we wanna create a sense of layers and depth. So um, when we have our puppets in there just moving about, um, it kind of looks like, you know, there's like a real little scene there. Um, it's not all flat and one dimensional, even though the things we are making everything out of is flat. Um, so that's why I'm doing that. I'm gonna add like some extra little layers in. Um, and I'll paint this little rock bit later. Um, now the second thing you're going to want to do is um, we're going to take the top. Here, I'll take this and show you on my other thing. Um, obviously, we need a place for our sticks to go into so the puppets can move about freely. So um, whoa, um, you're going to see that I created a little slit up top. Um, again, that's at like the very top, like right up here. Um, and then I added a teeny tiny little notch. I don't know if you can see that. Let me hold it up right there so that um, I can stick the stick in there. Let me provide an example and it will stay. So then you can have like a little, I don't know, if your hands get tired and you don't want to puppeteer anymore, you can, you know, put your puppet down. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing too. So now we have the top and again, an exacto knife works really well for this. Um, oh good, I did it on the right side. Last time there was like this like weird little seam right here and it was really hard to cut through, but now I did it on the proper side. Um, so you can kind of go as far over as you want with it. Again, just try not to make sure you um, hit the other, you know, the end. Woo! Love it when it glides. It's the best feeling. And you can keep it kind of thin. Um, if you do more space, obviously your puppet will kind of be more free to move about, but um, it's good to keep it kind of thin so that the stick can have like something to brace against so your puppet doesn't get all wacky and go um, places you don't want it to an accident. Ooh. Again, this totally doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't like the part that anyone's seeing. So as long as it's functional for you and you're happy with it, you are good. Ooh. Please don't bend on me. Yeah, try to be careful with your box too. This is your stage. You don't want to, you know, break it. There we go. All right, so I've created a little, little spot up here. You can wait to put the notch in at the end. I don't know if you want to like decide where the, um, where the puppet will stay or to, like stand. Um, all right, so now we have this base. Um, and the first step is gonna be painting the background. So now is kind of like when we decide what does our dream aquarium look like. So um, again, I got the suggestion of purple in the comments. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my purple paint if I can find it. Oh, come on, I know you're in there. There we go. Um, I kind of like the idea on this one. I just kept it pretty simple because I was trying to um, do it fast so I could get it, you know, like post the pictures. But um, this one, I think we can a little bit more creative with it, you know? Um, I think you're, I might need more paint than that. Maybe I'm gonna mix in some white so that I can get like some swirly patterns or something because this is after all water. The fish lives in water. Ooh, okay. Now I'm gonna get out a paintbrush, bigger one so I can Get the water off. 
I'm gonna move this down slightly so you can see. My floor is kind of messy, so I'm trying not to just show you that. Um, when somebody else just, or Megan still said, uh, sunken treasure slash pirate. I like that. Let's do that theme. I'll make, make a little pirate chest or something. Um, all right. So I'm just going to start, take this and start painting the back of it. And I'm just kind of going for it. I might use, um, kind of like swirly motions to kind of create that that um, watery pattern, if that makes sense. And you can take as much time doing this background as you want. Um, again, I'm just kind of doing it fast because I feel like it's not super fun for you guys to watch me just like paint. Um, so I'm going to speed through it. But if you want to take more time and paint like something really beautiful on there, like a whole mural, so your fish puppet can have the best views, I would 100% support you on that. Alright, I'm gonna keep going. And um, you can paint the sides too, but keep in mind that when we look at this, we're mostly just going to be looking um, at it straight on. You might want to paint the floor. It's kind of up to you. Hold it around, angle it. Kind of depends on where you're performing it from too. This is just for you, you might want to paint all the sides, but yeah. Also, another secret. This doesn't even have to be an aquarium of any sort. You could just make a little toy beater out of a cereal box and then use it, you know, to perform whatever you want. So this method's kind of... It's kind of can, can be used for lots of different things. Takes a long time to paint the whole base, sorry. I'm gonna take some white and start like, I don't know, giving it a little jazzing it up, that's what I should say. There we go, so I'm adding some like ooh, little wavy lines in there now. Again, I'm doing this super fast. This paint layer is not going to be very, um, like, thick. It's kind of translucent a little bit, so if you want to take your time, you know, let it dry, paint another layer on, that's probably good. I'm making my own sound effects so I can paint these little wavy lines. <laughs> You know what would be really cute if somebody did like like a Spongebob underwater theme? Because you know how like, I don't know if you, if you have watched Spongebob, but um, they have like this really pretty like background with like these, these colorful flowers or like sea flowers almost in the sky. I want to see someone do that. Right, I'm spending a little bit more time on this one than my other one. This is kind of like with all of my projects um, or all the workshops that I do, like depending on how much time you really put into it, um, you can make it either like, you know, really, really beautiful or pretty quick. Um, so really it's all about the time and effort you want to put into it. All right, I have this really pretty wavy background, kind of trippy almost. Um, I like the purple because it almost suggests like, it's like villainous a little bit like it almost looks like stormy waters or something so I kind of like that this goes with the sunken treasure pirate theme um and I still have some purple left over on my paintbrush so I don't know maybe we'll incorporate it in somehow um all right I'm gonna paint the rock now just so I can get that out of the way really fast too I'm gonna mix here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna mix some black in with the purple so I just get like a dark purple rock I'll show you what I'm doing. See, it's like the little, that little side thing. 
And what I'm going to do to kind of still keep this illusion of a border is I'll show you in a second. I'm just painting those sides. See how, see how I'm kind of doing that? Um, so I still want to keep that orange border on that. Well, this just looks like a black rock. That's okay. All right. Ooh, it's hard to paint over with the... Hard to paint over the bright orange. Maybe using a mini weeks box wasn't the best for this. All right. Mm -hmm. Making all these noises because I'm... I want the paint to dry nice and thick. All right, so that's my, my rock now. Ugh. You can kind of see that I kept that border there and everything. Um, then of course, I don't know, you can kind of see the sides when I do this, but again, we're not really gonna be looking at those. So I'm gonna avoid the sides just for now. Um, and now we're gonna go back to our big flat piece of cardboard that we're gonna make everything out of. So um, keep this in mind. We kind of want to like, you know, plan plan what we're going to do with this so we don't all of a sudden run out of cardboard and we're like no I needed more to complete my dreams um so I'm gonna pull my little fishy guy where'd you go so again this was something I didn't do on this one and in retrospect I should have done it um what we're gonna do is we want to make two of these fishes right because um when we turn it around we still want to see the same image. It's not good that you can see, you know, the back of this Fruit Loops box. So we want to make sure we have two room or um, enough space for two prints of our of our fishes. And if you're doing even more, like maybe you want to have two characters interact with each other, make sure you have room for four prints of them. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of block that out. Where'd my pencil go? It was right in front of me, and of course it's vanished now. Um, probably right behind my, my computer. Um, that's okay because you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna use a Sharpie. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna kind of map that out. All right, so let's say my little fish prints are gonna go in this square, right? Again, you don't really have to do this. I'm just kind of doing this for my own, um, my own sanity. All right. Um, I can't find my pencil. That's disappointing. It's probably like right in front of me. I don't know if you do that when you're crafting, but like it's always in the most obvious spot ever. Um, yeah, it's gone. I don't know where it went. Um, so now I'm going to have you guys help me out. What kind of fish should I be doing? Um, again, we kind of have this really like cool purple dark background. What kind of fish would look good with this? Um, and I have paints of all colors so we can decide. Um, I don't know. This was just a kind of a fish I made up. So if you want to shout out a color, like, and I'll just draw a fish and do that, um, that would be really cool. But if you want to be like, no, do a clownfish, I can do that too. Um, I'll just have to look up what a clownfish looks like. Um, and now we are, we're also doing um, with this, we're going to make the little decorations. I'll pull this out again so you can see. What I did here was I created little, um, vines just got that little squiggly lines then i made a little teeny tiny castle um so those are my decorations for that tank um but i promised megan that i would do uh um what do you call it a sunken treasure like a treasure chest that's what it's called um so i can go ahead and do that i really don't want to just free where did my pencil really go hmm. you do need a pencil for this project i probably should have said that I am an artist and I do not have a single pencil on my desk. That's okay. Um, we're just gonna freehand cut it then, or maybe we'll use the Sharpie. Um, all right, so I'm gonna cut out a little treasure chest, um, or I'm gonna draw it. Um, so when I'm doing that, the you're gonna wanna make sure that you leave a little tab at the bottom of it um, so you can attach it to um, the bottom of the box. See, since I had hot glue, I actually, for the little castle, all I did was just hold, um, it down while the hot glue was drying but for this one um what i did was i made a little tab so and i glued it down with the glue stick um to the bottom so that's what we're gonna do um so just make sure you leave like a little space for a tab on the on whatever you're doing um or if i don't know maybe you can like put things from the sides um you might want to put tabs on the sides 
wherever you're attaching it. Um, all right, so I'm gonna draw out a little treasure chest. I kind of forgot what a treasure chest looks like. Is that silly? It is. I should know what a treasure chest looks like. All right. Hmm. Could this be a good shape? Yeah, I think that's that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um. All right, and I'm gonna cut that out now. I could be using an exacto knife, but um, I think that blade is kind of dull. I felt that one. I felt that when I was cutting it earlier, um, and I don't want to waste any time looking for my blades because I do not see them on my desk either. That's okay because scissors are easy to cut out shapes like this with. All right, so I have my little a little treasure chest shape um i might just because i don't want to like mix up more paint just for something small like this you can do this though um i'm just gonna take my sharpies and i'm gonna color it in um let's see i don't want i don't have a brown sharpie so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna make it like i don't know like a purpley color this isn't your average pirate chest it's like a cool pirate chest um it's like a funky one right so hmm I'm just going to take it and color it in. I can start decorating. Hmm. <laughs> I made a little skull in the middle. All right, and then, I don't know, I'm just gonna draw some lines on there. You can take as long or as little as you want decorating things. Again, I don't feel like it's super fun for you to just like watch what I'm doing so um yeah who somebody said goldfish you got it I'll do a goldfish nice and simple Ooh, this kind of has like a very villainous vibe here. This is good. Yeah, it's got like a pinstripe thing going almost. All right, so I've colored it in. This is kind of my makeshift pirate sunken treasure chest thing. Um, since again, I did not have the color brown to work with. I'm just going to deck it out a little bit more because I'm an artist. I want it to look good or up to my standards. Um, and as you can see, I clearly did not do the tab thing that I just told you to, but that I had a plan, don't worry. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my X-Acto knife now, and you don't necessarily need to do this, but I'm going to do what we call scoring, which is um, when you create a little like a cut, but not a full cut. It's only like a halfway cut. So then um, the, the tab will bend a little bit easier. So I'm going to um, just cut like a straight line, like up this way from about like a quarter inch in, but I'm not gonna cut it all the way through. This is just like, again, it's called scoring to make sure that fold will go right on that line. Oh, and if I did it wrong, if you um, are bending it outwards, you're gonna wanna do it on the opposite side. Um, but it will still work if you do it on the wrong side. It just takes like more, just half a second more. All right, so as you can see, I made a little tab. So that's what we're gonna use to glue it down with. Um, now I'm gonna take out my, my stage. I'm gonna decide where should I put this? 
I'm thinking that this is kind of like a bigger object, so it should probably go towards the other edge. Um, you don't want it like hidden behind the rock, or maybe you do. Maybe like, maybe the treasure chest was strategically hidden there. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do that and do some like pretty coral on the other side or something. I don't know. So I'm gonna get my hot glue. I'm gonna put it at an angle. I'll show you in a second. Ooh, how can I do this? I'm putting it at a bit of an angle. You can't see, I'll show you in a second when it's dry. Um, just to create again, like that illusion of layers. You can make some things like straight, like parallel to the um, front of the, the little stage, or you can do things kind of like, you know, at an angle just to create some fun. All right, so here's what I have. Again, I'm kind of picturing like almost like a story where the treasure chest is hidden. I don't know. Um, and now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna create some funky coral. I'm just gonna have fun with it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I wanna have some fun colors going on. So I'm gonna cut off a piece of this, and I'm just gonna take um, I don't know any random color I really have. Squirt it on there. And I'm gonna let it dry, then I'm gonna cut out some funky shapes. Because coral can be pretty much any shape you want. If you can justify it, you got some good coral going on. All right, now I'm just gonna take my paintbrush, wherever it went, that's not it, there it is. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start just going going at it. Um, I'm just creating like a cool little like melt of colors almost so I can um ooh, there's a big dried glob of paint in the orange. Ooh, it's all over my nails. You don't have to do this, this is just like a fun fun way to get some pretty colors going on, I think. I like tie dye, so that's what that's what I'm going for here. If that makes sense, might have used way too much paint. All right, this is kind of a darker coral, but here's kind of like this 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 mishmash of pretty colors to use. Um, I'm gonna set that there to dry. Um, if I use, use, if you use too much paint, something else you can do that's kind of cool is um, like, let's say like we'll take this piece of newspaper and then just clear out my space here. Just take this and um, press it right onto it. And then I'll also blend the colors in kind of an interesting way. And then remove it. That's kind of cool, right? So now we have more of like a, it'll dry a little bit faster now. I'll take this and bend it back. I'm a big fan, and these aren't like really proper methods at all, as I'm sure you can see, but I'm like a big fan of just kind of, you know, using whatever you have around you to just do what, what you want to do. Um, so now we're just going to make a goldfish really fast. That should be pretty simple. Um, a goldfish would just I don't know, it's a pretty simple fish, right? So I'm just, what if I made it like an actual goldfish? Like those little, those little things you eat. Little crackers, you know what I'm talking about? So I'm just gonna cut out one roughly again. If you were, if you had more time, you might spend some more time on this. Um, but alas, I'm running out. So I'm just gonna cut out one and then I'm gonna trace um, the little, this over on um, to the other square so I can decide. That's not the right word. Um, so I can, you know, make an exact copy. So um, here's what I have here. And now again, when you're doing this, um, again, if I had my pencil, this would be way easier right now. 
it's definitely right behind my computer. Um, what we're gonna do is because again, we wanna almost, we wanna have this clear base, right? Because this side of the cardboard takes paint way better than this side does. Um, so when we do this, um, we're gonna wanna flip it over and place it down like this, so that when you cut it out, it's gonna be um, when you flip it over, you're gonna have identical but like complementing pieces, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to use my sharpie. Unfortunately. Yeah. I'm just gonna trace it. You could just always use one piece and paint the other side, but um the issue with that is that then you're gonna see the stick and that's just not like I don't know. It doesn't look as pretty as the others, so we don't wanna do that. out All right, so now I've got, if I place these together um, and make sure the orange pieces are together like that. See, now I have pretty much an almost identical, um, it's okay because I didn't do it perfectly, little fish. Um, and we're just gonna paint the sides the exact same way um, so that when you place them together, um, keep in mind this is like, we're doing this so you can see both sides. Um, so I'm gonna get out. Let's use the orange because that's that's gold enough. Ooh, come on out. There you go. I'm gonna get out another paintbrush. I'm doing it real thin because um I'm over the half hour mark already. I'm just gonna do this really quick for some pretty color. Yeah, this looks nice and golden. It looks great. Somebody just said I should have done a zebra fish. I know, but I'm already doing your other suggestion, goldfish. I could always do that later after the workshop. You know, like not on Facebook Live. All right, so now as you see, I've gotten to colored um, little fish and I'm just going to draw some eyes really quick. I'm going to make it kind of look like the, you know, the actual little goldfish. And when you do this, again, try to make sure it's like identical. So almost like you can just eyeball it, but try to put the eyes in the same place if you're putting eyes on your little fish. Yeah. And then try to line up that smile too. All right, and now it's time for almost the final part. Um, I probably won't get to the coral today, but I did just show you how to create kind of like a cool little mishmash of colors. So I don't know, hope you do something with that. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hot glue now, but again, if you have tape, this works just as well. I'm gonna place this on the orange side of it. And I'm gonna do a pretty, pretty big lump of glue. See, that's what I just put on. Then I'm gonna take, I'm taking the pointy side of the stick and laying it down. And then while that's still drying, let me make sure, I am just going to take the other side of this fish, angle it down so you can see, and I'm just gonna place that over too. You could probably place some um, glue on this fish, but eh. It's gonna almost fold around the stick, but that's okay. Oh, my dirty hand's got some marks on the fish. That's okay. All right, so now as you can see, I have this little fish puppet. And just to, just to tie it all together, let me angle this down. Mm, there we go. 
Um, I'm gonna put my fish in there. And now he can swim, do as he pleases. Um, so there is our, my very, my second um, toy theater aquarium. I hope you guys had fun with me today. Um, and next week I'll be doing a workshop on nature puppets. We're gonna be making um, puppets out of sticks and leaves um, and they actually look really cool. So I hope you join me for that. Bye everyone, have a great weekend.